macaroni and cheese, it's not just for kids. It can be for adults. It can be for both kids and adults. And that's exactly what this baked mac and cheese is. It has all the delicious cheese properties. It has all the flavor you want, the creaminess. And guess what? We're gonna make some in one baking dish and I think you're gonna love it. We all have different tastes on macaroni and cheese. Whether you love the stovetop kind that comes out of the box, no hate on that, it's good in a pinch, I get it. But it's also nice to make it at home. You're not gonna make it homemade all the time. I get that. On a weeknight, you're not always gonna feel like it. But when a special occasion is coming up, maybe it's Thanksgiving, maybe it's Christmas, maybe it's just something you wanna have people over for, you might wanna make a delicious baked macaroni and cheese. And let me tell you something, as the kids grow up, they will eventually learn to appreciate truly homemade macaroni and cheese because those nuances, those flavors, they really are better when we make it. So this has elements of what my mom did, and it has elements of things that I'm gonna add for more flavor, but it's pretty much basic macaroni and cheese, except it's delicious and the best. So what we're starting with is macaroni. Now you can use just regular elbow macaroni. I'm using kind of more of a shell macaroni. You can see it's a little bit bigger. There's really no reason other than it's what I had in my pantry. And what I will always preach is, use what you have in your pantry to make a recipe work. So I have water boiling, the really important part here is to salt your water when you're gonna do pasta. This is your one chance to make sure that you're seasoning your noodles. And I know you think, well, I don't want the salt. It doesn't all go into the noodle, but it does season it. So we're gonna pour in our noodles. We want them just cooked al dente. And what that means is they have a little bit of texture or a little bit of tooth to them. You don't want them mushy. If you have them cook all the way mushy and then put them into the cheese sauce and then bake them, they're gonna get really mushy. So while that's going, I'm gonna turn my other burner on here, a little lower. And what we're gonna do is take some butter and we're gonna melt it. So we're gonna start by putting together butter and flour and that's gonna be the base for our cheese sauce. So the pasta is cooking and my butter is just now melted. You can see how it's fully melted. So what we're making is a roux. So I'm gonna do equal parts flour to the butter and I wanna cook the flour in the butter just a little bit because I want it to cook out a little bit of that raw flavor. Now, there's different people who think, you know, well, it doesn't really have a raw flavor once it's cooked. Cooking it like this, I do think makes a difference on that flavor of the flour and of the finished dish. So it's really no big deal while your pasta is cooking and you can check it here easily. You don't want it to boil over. And you can keep seeing how when I'm stirring this, see how you get those bubbles and it's starting to become almost smooth. That's exactly what you want so we can pour in the milk. So I'm turning this down just so it's not cooking too strong. But you can see my flour, I notice almost a nutty smell from the butter and the flour, but you don't want it to get burned. So what I'm gonna start doing is pouring my milk. Now this isn't just any milk, this is evaporated milk, which you're gonna say, seriously, that canned stuff, yeah. So you've probably heard it before, but when you use evaporated milk, it's not as rich as a heavy cream, but what it does, it already is somewhat evaporated, meaning it doesn't have all the water content milk does. And so it actually holds the roux better and makes it stronger, meaning it doesn't separate and that's what you want. So I'm putting in bits and then I'm stirring them in until they're well mixed in and it's just a smooth white sauce, which at first you're gonna think, oh, this doesn't look that great. But every time you add some and stir, it eventually just smooths out and it makes a sauce. So I just drained the noodles. The cheese sauce is just about ready to add cheese to and everything, that white sauce that we're making is just about ready. So I've been shredding up my Cheeses. Now I want a sharp cheddar and a Monterey Jack. That to me is super important. Monterey Jack has the ability to be so melting and like just that, that melting cheese that you want. But then the cheddar is for flavor. You want a nice strong cheddar to me for flavor. Some people use American cheese. And then we're gonna put in a little bit of cream cheese too. Again, that's to up the creamy factor. Adds a little bit of offset tanginess too, which I think is important. So to this white sauce, you can see it's just slowly cooking. And look how it has a little bit of viscosity to it, which I know is hard to see on camera, but that's exactly what you want. It has a thickness to it. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna be saucy enough that the noodles are gonna finish cooking in here because we only cooked them to al dente. But we wanna give this some more flavor. So we're gonna add a little bit of dry mustard. This is like, we're talking classic, classic macaroni and cheese sauce coming in. A little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. Now, it's not so you taste nutmeg, this isn't a pumpkin pie, but what the nutmeg does is it adds this like underlying nuttiness, especially when you make a white sauce like this. If you just make like a box chamel, you add a little bit of nutmeg and it brings out the flavor so much better. Not to the point where you ever notice there's nutmeg in it. You don't. A little bit of black pepper, that to me is super important. We're gonna put some fresh black pepper just so it has that nice strength to it. And then of course we need some salt. 
Some cheese, of course, is gonna have a saltiness to it or a little bit of seasoning, but you need some salt in this before you add all that just to make sure everything is balanced and seasoned really well. So I'm whisking all that in, and now we're gonna start adding in all of our cheeses. So we have our shredded cheeses, but we also have our cream cheese. Cream cheese to me is super important, so I'm gonna start by putting that in. It's room temperature, so it should melt into that pretty easily. Again, with the shredded cheeses, we shredded them because we want them to melt in really easily too, and we don't want chunks of that cheese. So we're gonna put those right in there, and I'm gonna make sure to grab it all and throw it right in. And now what we wanna do is just slowly whisk it until it's smooth. And you can see in just a couple minutes, we're pretty much getting a smooth sauce. Now there's a few pieces of cheese that have yet to melt. That's okay because we're gonna pour on now all of that hot noodles right into here and they'll finish bringing it all together. So I'm gonna bring the cheese sauce over and it just, does that not look good? Look at the melting, yeah. So that cream cheese is really gonna help it be smooth and creamy. The Monterey is gonna give it a little bit of that cheese pull type texture that you want. Then we have all of our noodles here. And what we're gonna do is just bring them over and grab a spoon just because once you know they sit for a couple minutes, you'll just have to have a spoon help them get in here. But then put them right into that cheese. Now, you're gonna think that's a lot of cheese. It is, but what you have to remember is these noodles are gonna finish cooking with that cheese. So they're gonna actually soak in more of that goodness. So I wanna stir this together and kind of get them all coated and then we're gonna dump it right into our baking dish. Make sure we get all the cheese sauce off because <laughs> you want that to go nowhere. Now, this is one of those things, obviously, we're not talking health food. Sometimes around the holidays, sometimes special occasions, it's just about how good it is and that's what this really is. So I wanna just pour this all and see how it pours, that's what I want. I want that pourable macaroni and cheese because that's how we're gonna know it's creamy and it's delicious. So we want one that kids love, we want one that adults love, and we're gonna put it right into our baking dish. What's great about this is, you know, at this point if you wanted to, you could have this ready the morning of and put it in the fridge for a bit and then bake it later. It will take a little bit you know, longer to bake. You have to remember when something's chilled, but you can assemble it a little ahead of time if you want to and have it ready. So we're going to just smooth this out and we're gonna mix a quick topping to put on top that will really just finish it off. It's all in there. So to finish it off, I have a little bit of melted butter here. I'm gonna add some, I use fresh breadcrumbs. You could use panko if you wanted to. I just usually will have fresh breadcrumbs always somewhere or bread I wanna use up. And we're gonna grate just some Parmesan right into it. So this isn't, I said, an adult mac and cheese, meaning this doesn't have all the unique weird cheeses. It doesn't have, you know, seven different kinds of cheese for these like nutty different flavors. But I do think putting some Parmesan with butter and breadcrumbs on top, it finishes it off well. It adds a nice brown kind of like crispy note to it. And also, we all know this, Parmesan has the ability, and I mean fresh Parmesan, has the ability to have this amazing seasoning-like quality to it where it adds a nuttiness, it adds kind of like a flavor nuance without being overpowering if you don't do too much. So I'm just mixing that together and we're gonna sprinkle this goodness all on, I mean, look at that. So you have the melted butter that all those breadcrumbs are soaking in. It smells really good. So we're gonna sprinkle this all over. The important part is just to make sure it's somewhat even. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you've seen, I mean, when you do a baked mac and cheese, you don't have to do this, but what this does is give it kind of just that finishing touch. I always think things like this, since they're not everyday dishes, they're not every night dishes, when you do them, you can spend a little bit more time because then it looks and notices and it makes sense that it's not an every, everyday dish, whether it's for your family or kids, it's obvious that it's kind of a special dish. So now we're gonna pop this right in the oven and it's gonna get bubbly, it's gonna heat back through, those noodles are gonna actually finish cooking, which is what you want and it's gonna get crispy on top. Isn't it lovely? It's beautiful. So it baked, I wanted it to get crispy on top with a little bit of browning. So during that baking process, it's actually doing a couple things. Our cheese sauce was still somewhat thin and that's because it was soaking into the noodles as it baked. So you wanted it liquidy enough that it finished cooking the noodles without overcooking them. That's why al dente is important. I, there, it's just beautiful, it just is. So at this point, I always, when it comes out of the oven, let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. It's like bubbling hot. You want it to just kind of calm down a little bit. And then we're gonna get in here and we're just going to, uh, look, look at that still creamy, beautiful sauce. Look at that. 
Is that not, ah, uh, that just looks good. You know, macaroni and cheese, I feel like you have it a lot when you're a kid and it's all you think about. As you grow up, you don't think about it as much, except when you have it, you think, why don't I have this a lot more? And that's what this is all about. It's super creamy, super just like luscious and just, mmm, 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 that's good. It's good. What I like, this macaroni and cheese isn't trying to be something weird. It's not having all these different flavors of cheese hitting you in the mouth. It is simple, straightforward cheese, kind of what you expect with a strong cheese flavor, but then it has those nuances that we added. So like that nutmeg, you don't notice the nutmeg, but you notice this beautiful flavor in that cheese sauce that's really important here. And then it's just enhanced by all the little different things we did to it. You can see how creamy it is. That was like that cream cheese we put in. It made sure that it stayed creamy. That's what you want. You want a delicious, creamy macaroni and cheese. That's what everyone's gonna be happy about. So whether you're having, you know, everyone over for a big meal coming up, or you're just wanting something great for your family that's a little bit more special than maybe out of a box, this is your go-to. You know, honestly, it almost eats like a meal. It's so delicious and hearty. But you know, you can put it as a side with any great meal, whether it's a protein, whether it's not, and it's gonna stand up on its own. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you see that you don't have to buy a box to have macaroni and cheese. In fact, you can make delicious mac and cheese at home, bake it and make it one of the best casserole hot dishes you've had. Share this around so other people can see that if I can do it, anybody can do this. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. It's your hub for these great family meals once in a while that you wanna have something special for. That's what this is. Till next time, make something delicious. Enjoy it. If you're gonna make it, you gotta enjoy it. <laughs>